Hello and welcome to session 12 of our course on quality control and improvement using Minitab. I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh Mehta School of Management, IIT Bombay. So, uh, we are discussing in last session about uh, uh, attribute control chart. So, uh, two charts we have discussed like C chart and U chart which is used for uh, monitoring the defects. Uh, and uh, a C is used when constant sample size are used to monitor defects and U is used when uh, sample size varies uh, at different time points like that, ok. So, uh, we will move on with other attribute control charts. So, beyond this what is there is that we have a uh, P types of P type of control chart over here. P is basically P chart and NP chart we will discuss both the charts over here. So, a P is uh, proportion uh, defective which is monitored earlier case was defects this is defective over here and defective means 0 1 condition either it is useful or it cannot be used like that. So, in this case either useful or scrap we can think of. So, in this case uh, one of the example that is showing over here is uh, uh, number of defective cans uh, when every time I am inspecting 50, 50 samples subgroup size we can think of. So, number of samples at a at a given time point what we have at time, time point T 1. So, these are the 12 cans which was uh, found defective and uh, 50, 50 uh, cans were inspected basically ok. Uh, so, uh, over here uh, formulation uh, is also uh, this. Uh, this assumption was taken as binomial distribution assumption and based on that formulation is given over here. What you can see is that UCL will be uh, P average, P average will be calculated based on individual proportions over here. So, proportions can be calculated for a specific values over here. So, if I take this value uh, P 1 it will be 12 by 50 basically. So, then I can calculate what is the value proportion over here P 2 similarly P n like that. So, P i is given over here which will be a number of defective items divided by uh, sample size that we have taken as specific one. So, P i and then we can get uh, we will get uh, 30 P i's and then average of this 30 P i's will give me uh, P bar or average defectives uh, of the process like that. So, that will be the central line over here and then we can calculate. Uh, UCL P bar 3 multiplied by and this will be constant in case uh, we are taking constant sample size and it will be different if I am taking a different sample size at every time point like that. So, we can vary the sample size also if you have varied sample size also we can plot that one. So, this is uh, for scenarios where we are we are interested in plotting the defectives like that. So, somebody may be number of rejections in uh, number of uh, rejections of uh, maybe engine assembly in that case how many engines are rejected like that. Okay, I produce this many engines in a shift and how many produced are uh, defective like that. So, that scenarios also can be monitored which is abnormal which is uh, uh, normal which is abnormal like that. So, this is one example and we have uh, some other example also on this. So, this is also another example where 20 samples of size 100. So, every time I take 100 samples and this is taken from a book Amitabh Mitra. So, both the case we will solve and try to see how p charts can we can use p charts for interpretation of the data. Okay. So, what we will do is that we will take some examples over here. So, I will open p charts and uh, then uh, I will illustrate how this can be done in mini tab ok. So, uh, so this is uh, the two examples that we are talking about non confirming cans first one and then the sample uh, fraction defective what you see is that 12 by 50 was done and this is 0.24 like this we divided by 50 I get proportion defectives and uh, that can be monitored like that. So, so what we can do is that we, we can calculate this one. So, we can use calculators over here to calculate this one. So, if you want to calculate this one. So, this uh, uh, store results in if I say C 3 over here what I can do is that I will I will write down that uh, uh, C 2 uh, divided by 50 let us say. So, that is the expression I want to use over here and if you click that one automatically this values will be replaced and you will get all this observation that you see over here ok. So, uh, so this are the observations that is saved over here ok. So, this is same numbers what I can see over here. So, this is 12, uh, 12, 15 like that. So, sample size was subgroup size was 50. So, that division was done. So, Minitab you do not need to divide this one. So, what you do is that stat you go to I know this is for defectives and I go to control charts attribute control chart I go to p chart directly and I what I do is that which is the variable number of non conforming cans over here. What is the subgroup size I, I mentioned 50 over here and p chart option again the same thing I test 
I want to test anything beyond 3 sigma uh, limits like that uh, which is abnormal scenarios I click ok. Uh, what will happen is that you will get the p chart corresponding p chart. So, in this case what happens is that 2 points are going outside what you can see and uh, uh, these are the abnormal scenarios. So, proportion defectives uh, goes outside. So, proportion defective what you see is that upper limit line is 0 0.41 average is 0 0.23 and lower control is 0 0.05. So, 2 points gone outside. So, we have to find out figure out what has gone wrong at this time point when uh, proportion uh, non conforming are very high uh, in these 2 points like that ok. Uh, now, the problem with this is that so, uh, in this case. So, this is proportion defectives and if uh, this proportion defective changes and uh, when the uh, sample size changes in that case also we can we can figure out. Uh, what can. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, a p chart over here if the sample size changes in that case only the what will happen is that I will have a variable uh, UCL and a variable LCL like that ok. So, that is uh, one aspect. So, but uh, what happens is that in production floor what, what generally happens is that uh, proportion defectives uh, people understand defectives one defect one defective two defectives like that when you say in fraction they do not understand because a engine fraction defective does not make any sense. So, what they does is that they multiplies the n with p. So, they call it as n p charts like that that makes an uh, impression that number of defectives then uh, we can we can we can uh, immediately understand over here ok. So, in this case what you see is fraction in the central limit UCL and LCL like that. So, operator may not understand the what is fraction that you are saying average defective is 0 0.04, but I understand that it should be more than 1 like that. So, it should be uh, more than uh, 0 or, or on the higher side uh, or on the positive side uh, we want to uh, we do not understand means how this average is 0 0.04 like that proportion I do not understand make it much simpler like that. So, in that case what they does is that they will multiply it with n nothing else they are doing over here. So, in this case what they will do is that they will have a different limit line. So, in this case n p charts are recommended over here. So, this n is multiplied over here with p and this is n multiplied by p formula somewhat change. So, this will be the central line and this will be the lower control limit line. So, in this case what you will observe is that the numbers are in whole number with some fractions like that. So, now 2011 this is understood. So, this is 2. So, this is understood by the operator lower control is 2 defectives like that. So, we expect out of 50 this uh, 2 2 is the lower control limit line. So, we should be over, uh, above this one and the upper is around uh, 20 or something like that. So, that that is uh, what is the upper limit. So, number of defectives uh, uh, out of 50 inspection should not go beyond 20 like that. That that is the general feeling of the operator like that. So, that becomes easier to monitor for the operator like that. So, uh, we have a chart which is known as NP chart which is just a variance of P chart. So, uh, what we can do is that we can we can we can same uh, same charts like that. So, we can we can also see NP charts uh, and way we can. So, number of cans like this. So, over here same examples we are taking. So, stat I go to stat control chart attribute chart I, I click on NP charts like that. So, I, I do not want to see proportion uh, and their upper limit lower limit like that. I want to see number of non conforming one and I will say subgroup size is 50 because and other conditions remain same and then what I do is that I click ok and then I get the control limit lines that this is the NP chart which is which is done by Minitab and here you see the numbers are 20. So, this is easily understood by the operator that 20 defectives if it is going beyond that then I should be very very much cautious like that out of 50 if in more than 20 is defective then that means something unnatural is happening ok. If the average is average should be around 11. So, out of 50 my process is like that. So, on an average I am getting 11 uh, types of uh, 11 number of defective items like that and the lower limit is around 2. So, uh, and uh, here we can see 2 abnormal scenarios which is coming up like that. So, it becomes easier for the operator to understand this type of uh, uh, representation of the data. Uh, otherwise, uh, P and N P are both used for defective. So, yeah, any of the uh, one you can use like that ok. So, uh, only one thing is that there can be variable uh, sample uh, numbers like that. So, it can it can also vary. So, maybe uh, uh, 
some example this is variable subgroup size what you see c9 and c10 so defective number of defective sample size changes and in that case also if you if you plot this one so control chart and uh, attribute chart np charts like that and i mentioned that i want to see defectives and instead of 50 i say that this is in column c10 and i want to see what happens like that so then what you get is that this type of control chart you will get so this is np charts where n is varying so number every time i am inspecting is changing so in this case uh, limit lines are also changing like that so central line is changing because it is multiplied by n so n is changing so central line is changing upper limit is also changing and lower line what you see is that this is taken as zero so minute i was considering this as zero because uh, every calculation is uh, negative coming out to be so whenever you see attribute charts and this is coming out to be negative what happens is that i freeze that point to zero because negative uh, defects or defectives does not make any sense so in this case so that's why you don't see uniform uh, uniformity in central line and the upper control limit line and lower control limit line so uh, that will always happen so when when we are talking about defects and defectives it cannot be less than zero so that is the uh, constraint that we have okay so, uh, and the underlying distribution I told that this is binomial based on which this uh, control chart is developed. So, uh, that, uh, this is a prominent chart which is used uh, nowadays uh, in any quality quality control uh, aspect. So, uh, these are the main control charts. So, when, when we talk about control chart, uh, generally we uh, try to understand x bar r, x bar s, individual moving range and c chart, uh, p chart, n p charts like that. So, these are the common types of control chart that is used to monitor any CTQs like that, ok. CTQs uh, if it is uh, in continuous variable, so that can be otherwise if it is attribute like that defects uh, and uh, defectives like that we can use uh, this type of, but it is always preferable to go to a CTQ which can be measured in continuous scale like that, that we, I have mentioned earlier also, ok. So, with this information over here we will move on to a different topic which is also an important topic uh, in quality. Uh, because we are assessing the quality before we go into improvement. So, we are trying to control and we are trying to see that what are the measures that that uh, will help us uh, to go towards improvement like that. So, one of the measures that is used uh, is known as uh, process capability, process capability. So, uh, earlier what we are talking about is the natural variability based on which I am giving a upper UCL control limit line and uh, LCL control limit line. So, but when we are talking about process capability, we are talking with respect to customer specification basically, ok. So, our natural behavior with, with respect to uh, tolerance where we stand basically, ok. So, what you see is the natural variation over here, what you see is the natural variation over here. So, this is the region of my natural variation of the process and then I compare it to the upper specification which is known as upper specification limit and this is known as lower specification limit which is the LSL over here. So, on an average my process average is around 25 let us say, but my specification given is between 20 and 30 like that. So, uh, with respect to my tolerance how I am how I am uh, basically uh, performing. So, that comparison when I am doing that is known as process capability analysis or uh, we will use some indices uh, for this. Uh, so, that will be known as process capability index, uh, ok. Some index we will use to express this one uh, process capability. So, that is known as process capability index, ok. So, uh, it is basically how uh, where is my process as compared to the uh, uh, specification width that is given by the uh, designer, ok. So, uh, a voice of the uh, customer is what you see is that lower specification to upper specification. So, this is the voice of the customer we can say and uh, and if, if I consider this one uh, the plus or minus 3 standard deviation this is uh, voice of the process basically. So, I am just comparing voice of the process with voice of the customer ok. So, that will give me uh, uh, process capability uh, measures like that ok. So, uh, so, uh, so before I go into process capability, uh, we should have uh, stability in the process. So, that is the uh, primary condition. So, before we calculate the process capability, my process should be stable. So, that is the basic criteria which is used, ok. So, uh, in this case how this calculation is done. So, every time process is moving. So, in this case with respect to time what you see over here. So, uh, in control uh, uh, scenarios is taken to calculate the process process capability. And in that case, uh, this is upper specification, this is lower specification and how the process is behaving. So, where we stand with respect to my variation with respect to specification that is what is seen in process capability analysis like that, 
ok, based on which I will decide whether uh, whether I need to improve and how much improvement is needed like that ok. So, this is graphical representation with respect to normal distribution what you see is that this is a just capable process. So, this is the tolerance that is given by the designer which is voice of the customer like that and we are performing exactly we are matching with the specification over here my voice of the uh, process is about using the same width like that because uh, and if you are using that one I am just capable basically. So, I am just fitting into the specification like that my variation is there ok. And if you see on this side, so my uh, mean as uh, if I am assuming mean equals to target over here. So, I am uh, I am exactly on the target as far as accuracy is concerned, but precision wise uh, I am using the total tolerance like that whatever whatever is given by the uh, designer ok. Here what you can see is that variation is high, but I have shifted to the lower specification side. This is also I, I have moved away from the target values. So, this is uh, undesirable. So, we have variation we are also moving away from the target values like that. Similarly, what you see over here is that uh, I am moving away to the uh, other targets uh, I am moving over towards the upper specification. So, I am moving to the one end of the uh, customer given specification like that. So, which is known as upper specification limit and this is known as lower specification limit which is which designer this has, this is different from the upper uh, control limit and lower control limit. So, lower control limits are defined by the process variability and process centering uh, process process mean and this is defined this is defined by the designer over here USL and NSL like that ok. So, uh, and if we are producing if my variation is very high. So, in that case what you can expect is that there will be certain fallouts over here because if you remember normal distribution in that case some fallouts will happen over here and uh, this is rejection basically. So, this is reject uh, whenever some products are falling within this. So, normal distribution uh, if you can think of a normal distribution graph you know that does not touch the axis over here there will be certain rejection, but in this case uh, because we are centered and uh, this scenario is much better this scenario is much better because the uh, tail is uh, much thinner as compared to this one. So, uh, whenever it touches so there is some probability high probability over here which is greater than this one what you see over here ok. So, uh, so, this scenario is what scenario uh, this is also a what scenario. So, this is just capable and this uh, will not be cap capability will be much less also. Uh, as compared to this, this will also be less uh, capability over here uh, ok. So, uh, most suitable uh, scenario is that uh, I am hitting the target and my variability is also less like that. So, I, I have less variability like that. So, that is the uh, scenario we are looking for over here ok. So, uh, there are different index to measure the capabilities and we will talk about two index over here. So, uh, what do you see if you if you want to visualize this one. So, uh, uh, if we if we if we divide this uh, this uh, we call it as process capability index. So, process capability visualization is that if uh, this is the scenario I am using the full full tolerance and if this is the scenario I am using a much less tolerance as compared to what is given by the uh, designer like that ok. So, uh, index uh, C p is expressed as uh, tolerance divided by. So, we can say that uh, uh, what is uh, uh, voice of the customer and this is the voice of the process which is known as six standard deviation and uh, standard deviation may be estimated over here. So, this is the expression for this. So, one is tolerance divided by. So, how much of the so this is the voice of the pro, uh, voice of the customer and this is the voice of the process. So, voice of the process means how much of the tolerance I am basically using my process is basically using that ratio is known as CP. So, earlier examples what you see is that uh, uh, total uh, my uh, voice of the process is this much and my variability plus or minus 3 standard deviation I am using the full tolerance I am using basically. So, in this case the ratio will be same. So, uh, our ratio will be uh, this voice of the customer will be exactly equals to voice of the process. So, this will be equals to 1 what what you see in the earlier diagram like that ok. And in this case second scenario what you see is that uh, my tolerance is uh, just may be uh, double of the voice of the uh, what we are using over here. So, in this case a uh, voice of the process basically. So, voice of the process is just half of voice of the customer. So, this will be uh, we can represent this as if, if I represent this one as 1 this will be half. So, C p index will come out to be equals to 2 what you see 
is shown over here. So, favorable scenario is that I am using less as compared to what is given by the designer and I want to reduce it further like that. So, uh, it is like you are moving a car in a tunnel like that and uh, if I am if I am just fitting into uh, that is not the best scenario. If I can go into the tunnel with the with ease, so that is the that is the uh, opinion that is the that is the best scenario what we can what we can think about ok. More and more I reduce the variability uh, more and more favorable situation assuming the target remains same like that ok. So, this CP index what it shows is that it shows uh, how much of the variability uh, my variability is with compared to the uh, tolerance that is given by the designer or given by the customer like that ok. So, if you have one sided scenarios, so in this case you can calculate a CPU. Uh, and CPL like that. So, Minidab does it automatically for you ok. So, just capable process we, we can think of CP is equals to 1 industry standard I am talking about. Uh, this may be scenario some of the industries follows that you should be CP should be exactly equals to 1.33 or more than that is the acceptable scenario or somebody can say it should be greater than equals to 1.67 that is the most favorable scenarios over here ok. And uh, and uh, if it is excellent means if it is more than 2 it is always excellent. So, uh, process uh, capability uh, if it is 2 uh, if it is uh, uh, greater than equals to 2. So, in that case that is the most favorable scenarios and uh, excellent performance we can say for the process like that ok. So, this can be calculated and this will be done automatically like what you see over here like uh, philosophy of uh, Six Sigma which we will discuss afterwards maybe in uh, some of the sessions uh, where it says that uh, higher the capability uh, better is the process condition like that and uh, less very vari less variation. So, less rejection basically. So, if you see with respect to specification uh, in that case lesser is the width of this. So, uh, thinner is the uh, proportion which is going outside over here or the probability of falling outside the specification like that ok. That is the philosophy of six sigma. So, I hit the target and I reduce the variability like that ok. Generally CP equals to 2 indicates that is a six sigma process ok, but there are other conditions which needs to be satisfied for that ok. So, uh, how do we calculate process capabilities that we need to see in Minitab? So, in this case uh, uh, for a given set of data I want to calculate the process capability like that and what is the option that we have. So, in this case we will take some example maybe and we will see how this capability index can be calculated. So, uh, let us take some data set what is provided uh, uh, in this. So, uh, this is uh, one uh, uh, bursting strength of uh, uh, 100 containers like that. So, at a given time point uh, it was taken some observation was taken container 1 to 5 five subgroups were taken over here and this is observation that we have and for this data set some specification is given customer specification lower specification limit is given over here and we want to calculate uh, uh, or we can take this piston ring which is both sided specification over here. So, this becomes easier to understand. So, this is 74 plus 0 0.035 like that and uh, 74 minus 0 0.035 that will be the uh, specification uh, for this product over here. So, uh, and uh, we will place this into Minitab and try to figure out what is the uh, CP index, what is the value of CP index. So, this is the data that was collected at a given time point. So, piston ring 74 and this is the data set that we have every time we have 5 subgroups. So, uh, we will calculate the uh, process capability index over here. So, if you go to the data set, so we will close this uh, one and we will open uh, capability analysis. Uh, process capability analysis uh, Minitab file which is already stored with me and uh, this is the piston ring examples that we are taking over here and uh, this example we are taking first. So, in this case we have both sided specification what you have seen. So, uh, plus or minus 74 plus or minus 0 0.035 this is taken from Montgomery's book example. So, uh, we will try to illustrate that one ok. So, what you do is that uh, stat uh, uh, quality tools and capability analysis over here. So, assuming uh, normality over here there are various options over here. I will take the simplest one assuming normality over here. Normality can be checked. So, we are not doing that at present. So, are they in single column? Uh, no, they are in uh, subgroups are in different one. So, this is ring 1 to ring 5 we will highlight this one and enter over here. 
Now, specification lower specification we will enter like that. So, this is given us. So, let me just check this one. So, 73.965, 73.965 that I will put as lower specification 73.965 that is the specification uh, mentioned by the designer and uh, the upper specification uh, will be equals to 74.035. So, that we 74.035. 74.035 like that ok. So, uh, now options over here. So, this transformation you ignore at present estimation over here. So, uh, this is uh, we can ignore at present uh, we will only see the CP index what is the value of that. So, uh, this uh, analysis is not required at present. So, these things we can ignore uh, at present whatever value comes. So, I want to see only the CP values. So, from here we can see. So, if you click OK, what will happen is that it will do some analysis and it will come up with some uh, diagram over here. At present we do not want to see all of that. So, what you see is that just uh, note that LSL is taken as 73.965. USL is taken as 74.035. I have not given the target over here. I have only given the width uh, band that is given by the customer and then I will only see the CP index that you see over here. So, this CP value is 1.16 and that is the formula that we are using over here. CP formulation uh, will be uh, this one. So, uh, uh, which I am using over here. So, this is the formulation uh, which uses uh, USL minus LSL. Uh, that is the tolerance or delta values over here. Uh, so, that is uh, uh, plus or minus 0 0.034 that is the total total width of that 2 times of that and divided by 6 into uh, standard deviation over here. So, there is a method of calculation of standard deviation. So, that we have to uh, discuss afterwards. So, at present we will assume that Minitab has calculated some standard deviation. So, this is taken and the output gives uh, given over here is uh, uh, CP is 1.16. So, uh, some way they have calculated the standard revision which we will discuss in the next session uh, how Minitab is calculating this one. And I also told that uh, uh, we do capability analysis whenever the process is stable like that. So, we will check that uh, whether the process is stable and uh, then uh, if the process is stable uh, how do I calculate the standard deviation which will be used in process capability analysis to calculate CP index that means delta divided by when I am I am doing the specification total tolerance uh, that is given and uh, uh, and uh, uh, divided by 6 process voice of the process. So, voice of the process this sigma is calculated based on certain assumptions like that that is process is under statistical control and then we can calculate sigma and there are ways to calculate sigma which is calculated from uh, x bar r charts like that. So, r is used as a measure, r bar is used as a measure and number of subgroups here, here it is 5. So, that ratio is used r bar by d 2 is used to calculate the uh, process standard deviation. So, that multiplied by 6 gives you the uh, denominator and numerator is the tolerance that we are having like that ok. So, uh, so based on that we will discuss, we will start discussing about uh, how they calculate this CP indices like that. Okay. So, sigma calculation we, we will see and that sigma calculation uh, is given over here what you see standard deviation within what you see over here and this is basically calculated based on control chart concept and r bar by d 2 is the formulation that is used to calculate standard deviation within and many other calculations we will see. So, ignore all other information just see USL and LSL uh, that is given and the difference between them will give you the uh, voice of the process voice of the customer and uh, 6 multiplied by the standard deviation within what, what is uh, way we will calculate next time and that will give you the voice of the process. So, ratio of this gives me 1.16 and uh, we can say just capable. It, it has not reached 1.33 which was the uh, standard in many of the companies, but it has just crossed 1 we can think of. So, uh, there is a need for improvement of this process. We need uh, to reach around 2 CP values like that. So, that is our objective. We want to reduce the variability and more and more I reduce the variability more and more my CP index increases like that ok. So, that will be our uh, point of discussion. So, we will see uh, first how the sigma is calculated and based on the concept that uh, 
they are under whether they are under statistical control that we will also cross check with these examples like that and then we will see other measures uh, which is used uh, to check capabilities like that ok. So, we will stop over here and we will continue discussion of this capability analysis. So, these two example we will use to illustrate our many of the measures that we will see that Minitab uh, provides and what is the meaning of each of these uh, outputs that you see that you see in Minitab like that ok. Uh, thank you for listening uh, this session we will continue in the next session from here. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.